guys, in this video I wanted to have a go at trying to make a lion face. Now I wanted to make something for the new Lion King movie coming out. Now I couldn't decide between doing the cartoon style Simba or the new one at first. But I don't often do realistic style ones so we'll try this one first. I printed off two copies of it just in case my cake makes one all greasy. Print it to the size that you want it to be. So this is just an image that I got off the internet. And I've got a cake board that's just a little bit bigger than the face. So you'll see I've cut out the face so I know how big it's going to be. And I've just marked around it on the board. And then we've put a bit of buttercream within that mark. Now I'm using a sheet of cake. And I'm going to cut out the shape on this. So I'm just going to put two layers on. I'm going to use a bit of chocolate buttercream in the middle. Let's put our second layer of sponge cake on. Just make sure your sponge cake is the size of your template. So we're going to cut around the edge of this. Keep your off cuts. I mainly eat the off cuts, um, but we are going to use some for part of the nose as well. So I'm going to cut around the face so that I can mark where the mane's going to go. So just put your knife in pressing down all the way around so it should leave me a little mark on my cake. And then on the inside of that mark I'm cutting at an angle so it's going to slope in towards my face or towards the lion's face. So I'm concentrating on the forehead first and then put a little line in. I've kind of cut through. Just be careful if you're cutting through that the paper doesn't go into the cake. I've put a line where the nose and the eyes go so that I've got a rough idea where to put them. Now instead of cutting anything out at the nose I want to build it up so I'm going to take a piece of my off cut that fits about the size of sort of that chin and nose. Let's cut around that. Just cut that pointy corner off. I'm going to put a little bit of chocolate butter cream on there. Before I stick the chin on I'm just going to cut the mane down a little bit so an angle under the chin and sloping it downwards towards the bottom of the board. Then let's cut the rest of my mane. Now I've cut the mane at an angle so it slopes down towards the face and then it comes up a little bit in the middle and then it goes back down again as it comes to the outside. So I have got quite a few off cuts on this cake so I'll be eating these later but you can use them for cake pops and all sorts of different bits and pieces. Or if you wanted to make this guy a body out of it, I suppose you could do as well. So I've just cut an extra layer off the bottom of the mane so it looks like he's got some a little bit further back. And then we've trimmed the top of the mane as well. I'm going to take out a few triangle chunks so that my mane doesn't look too smooth when I ice it. Let's just remark those eyes on again. Now can you see I've gone slightly off centre with mine. I didn't notice this when I was doing it but now that I can see it on the camera I can see the slightly off centre. It's almost like two triangles that we're cutting down and then sort of a curve for the mouth. Use your template again to mark where the bottom of the mouth is and then we're trimming some cake from underneath the mouth where the chin is and then I'm putting a little bit of buttercream above the nose. I'm just going to take out a couple more little triangles out of the, the mane and just use some small off cuts. I've got one that kind of slopes down like a little wedge shape onto that nose. Don't build the wedge on the nose too high though. Mine's a little bit higher than it maybe needed to be. And I'm just going to fill it out now either side. So if the piece is too big that's fine you can trim it down. And just a little bit there where the nose is going to sit. Then I'm going to put chocolate ganache all over the whole thing. Now you can use buttercream if you want. At the moment over here it's quite warm and my buttercream is just going to melt. So I'm going to use chocolate ganache and put it in the fridge. You can put two layers on if you want but I'm just going to stick to one on this one. Because I'm going to be working on my fondant a while on this I've mixed half fondant half modeling paste together. It's just going to make it a little bit more flexible for me and it's going to give me a little bit longer to work on it because I'm going to have to draw a lot of lines in for the fur. So just make sure it's big enough that it covers the whole cake. We're going to press it over the whole thing just pressing gently with your hands into sort of the eye sockets the mouth area and then we're going to cut off all the extra from around the edge. And I'm still going to use a template as a guide so I've got my other picture that I haven't cut out here. Just pushing a bit deeper in for my eye sockets. And then I want to have a look at what size eyes. Now the eyes are quite small. They look even smaller on mine when I do this but we'll see. Hopefully they'll look okay when we're finished. I've pressed down on the top of the eyes just a little bit, sort of the brow area. And then we're just going to deepen around sort of the nose area, nose and mouth. And then use your template to mark out where the nose goes. And let's draw that nose in with our modeling tool. So going deeper at the nostrils. 
and then align just up slightly and towards the edge of the nose as well. Just double check with your template everything's about where it needs to be. I'm going to put a bit of a dip down the top of the sort of nose between the eyes just lightly with my finger and then we're going to put some little lines indented across sort of from the nose bit out or the cheek area. I'm not sure if it's a cheek area on a lion, the muzzle bit. Then we're going to draw some lines in. So I've got the pointy end of my Dresden tool and I'm kind of using them to create fairly long lines on the chin, pressing in. Now I don't want to leave it too long because I don't want my fondant and modeling paste mix to set, but I should get a little bit of working time with it. So I'm going to put the hair all over the face. You can see I'm going much shorter on the nose area. And then we're going to take it up the nose as well. It's slightly longer hair on the nose. And have a look at your picture for what direction the hair goes in. You don't want to just do it all going up. You want to try and get different directions on that hair. And some really long lines now in for the mane. And now I'm pressing quite firmly. So you might find that if you do press hard, the odd bit of cake kind of shows through your uh, fondant and modeling paste mix where you've just pressed a little bit too hard. But that's fine. You should be able to just push it back together to seal it up. So once you put the hair all over, I'm going to make some ears. So I've just got sort of a, a piece that's kind of squashed into a roundish shape. I'm going to cut it to the size of the ear. So I've cut a bit off the bottom. And then we're going to put a slit into the mane about here. I'll just take that little bit out. So you can see my cake poking through, but that should be okay. And I'm just going to press the ear in. Can you see it's just folded slightly over at the top? That's fine. That's what we want. Then you're going to push that bit of mane back over the top of it. Let's just add a little bit more mane into the middle of the head. So I'm just trying to blend it in with my tool or even with your finger into the forehead. Put some lines in that and then some nice short lines in the ear. So I'm using the pointy end again of my tool. I'm just going to repeat the same on the other ear. Now I don't think I've got my ears quite the same size. I'm hoping it's not too obvious. And I've put a mark under the eye where I want it to be a little bit darker. Now at first I was going to paint them then I decided it would be a little bit easier if actually I just put it on in black fondant. So I've rolled some fondant nice and thin and I apologize it goes a bit blurry when I try and do this for you. But it's just a thin line of it underneath the eyeball and then kind of brought into the tear duct a tiny bit. Then a tiny piece just off under the nose above the sort of chin mouth area which is, would be his lip. Then we're going to paint the color in the eye. So I'm just using a food color. It's a food color gel and I've mixed it with a little bit of clear alcohol or dipping solution. It's actually dipping solution that I've got, which is just like alcohol. I'll put links in the description box as well to everything that I've used. So this is just a dark brown one. So lines coming from like the outside of the eye in and then from the pupil area back out. I'm actually going to stick the pupil on in black fondant though. So just a small ball of it squished down there. Same in the other eye. And I think my hand kind of gets in the way a little bit of you seeing this. I'm going to paint a little bit of this dark brown just around the eye area, trying to keep it in small little lines and also around the nose. Now, if you want a darker color with your food coloring, don't dilute it as much with your dipping solution. Anywhere where I don't want it as strong, I'm adding quite a lot of dipping solution. So it's very watered down the paint. We're going to go darker all the way around the edge of that nose. And I'm using a mix of powders and gel colors. So for the nose, I've got a nice color in the powder. So I'm just going to mix the powder again with that dipping solution. And we're just going to paint it onto the nose. Apologies, you see my scruffy hair in shot. And then I'm also using the brown that I used earlier. I'm going back over the nose again to try and make it look a little bit more shaded. Concentrating the deeper color sort of in the middle along that line that we put in. Just going a little bit darker down there. Anywhere that you want to look shaded, you can put a little bit of this dark brown. You could even use black, but I was worried I'd go a bit too dark. Um, then I'm adding a bit of chestnut brown, just really watered down now across the rest of the eye. We don't want it on too thick that we don't see the dark brown underneath that we put on. If you put too much on, just with a clean but slightly damp brush, just rub over the top and it'll just take off some of the color. And I'm just going to use a white, or you can use cream, cream or white to just put a tiny line on the top of the black pupil. Just so it looks like there's a bit of light reflecting in there. Then I've got a bit of kind of honey gold mixed with a tiny bit of my dark brown and I've really watered this down quite a bit now. If I water this down and paint it on with a big brush, it kind of runs in those lines that I drew earlier. So it should look darker. Can you see in between the hairs? 
where it's fallen down in there. Now I went a little bit bright here. Now looking at it on the screen, it's quite yellow. I should have really done it slightly more brown than yellow. And anywhere you want to go darker, just sort of thicken up the paint that you've got. So the food color, if you just add more of the food color and less of the dipping solution, it's going to darken that for us. And in some areas, I'm just going to go over with just the dark brown. But keep looking at your picture. Have a look at your picture for reference so you know where to add darker areas and where to keep it a little bit lighter. So I've not really added too much around the mouth and nose area. That wants to be nice and light. And then I'm darkening all the other areas up. I don't want it to look too flat with colour. So you can see there's some dark brown in there as well as the honey gold. And I'm just lightening it up slightly above kind of or about the eyebrow area. Now I did paint these on slightly uneven. I should have really used my template to mark exactly where those little bits went. I've gone dark brown in the middle of them and light on the outside. Can you see it's almost like a teardrop kind of shape where his eyebrows would go. Then I'm just going to darken the mane again. So it's just some dark brown, tiny bit of dipping solution. Anywhere I want it really dark, less of that dipping solution and more just the food colour on its own. And the dipping solution will evaporate, so it looks quite wet at the moment, but it doesn't take long before it evaporates. If you've gone too dark anywhere and you want to highlight any areas and make them a little bit lighter, we can use a nice lighter colour. Now I've got cream here, and it is the powder one I'm using mixed with the dipping solution. And it does have some whiskers kind of on the eyebrow area, so I'm just rolling thin some. I've got modelling paste here rather than fondant. I've just poked a couple of little holes in there. Oh, see if I can get them where I want them to go. Now I put these in and then decided they would actually look nicer if I had put clear ones on. But I wasn't sure how to make them clear and still edible. So I decided not to put the whiskers on the nose. Then I'm going to cover my board. Now you can cover your board first and then do your cake. But I thought because it was going to get paint everywhere. Then I would just paint over the board. So this is a cocoa butter paint. So you do need to warm it up to be able to use it and you'll see it's setting very quickly. So if I hold that over um, some warm water, it'll stop it setting as quickly. So I'm just going to brush this all over my board. So it is still edible this. But I thought it was an easier way of me getting um, colour around the mane than using fondant. And then I'm just dusting some dark brown powder, keeping it as a dry powder on the bottom and some yellow at the top, just to see if we can get some different shades and colours in the background. Looking at him, I think maybe he does need, need a bit of a body. So let's add just a piece of fondant either side of the head at the bottom. I'm going to squish it down quite flat. And then I'm just going to put some little lines in. Now again, if you're not sure whereabouts to put this, do check your template or your picture that you printed off. And we're going to colour this in the same colours that we used for the face. So it's kind of shadowed, so it would be a little bit darker. Still needs a bit of yellow, maybe it's good darker still. There we go. So there he is all finished. He doesn't quite look the same as the one in the poster that I printed off, but I think I'm still fairly happy with him, especially to say it's uh, my first time having a go at him. And then hopefully I'm going to have a go at doing the cartoon Simba as well, and then I'll see which one I prefer. So keep an eye out for that one coming soon as well. Now I've not seen this yet at the cinema, so I think I'm going to be doing that very soon. I'm looking forward to this film. There it is, all finished. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and leave me a comment below. You can see more of my tutorials by clicking on the images on screen now. If you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button to stay up to date with my future tutorials. There are also links in the description box below where you can find me on Facebook, Instagram and more.